but my doctor told me that too much protein is bad for you. What's up guys, my name is Lucas and in today's video, I'm gonna break down some of the common myths around protein and have a look at some of the, the rationales and reasonings behind why these myths are so flawed in and of themselves. So for those of you who are brand new to my channel, my name is Lucas. I'm the founder of Ergogenic Health and my mission is to bring you the most cutting edge health information that you'll struggle to find on Google. So please do me a favor, like this video, hit subscribe below and drop a comment down below if you have any questions or comments related to this topic. So ultimately in this video, what I'm gonna do is take a look at some of the common myths around protein and help to illustrate and debunk many of the common myths that seem to be floating around online in many social media platforms. So first of all, let's take a look at the importance of protein. Now, if we take a look at some of the main functions of protein in the body, we can see that protein plays a critical role in helping to build hormones and build neurotransmitters. Basically protein, which is made up of amino acids, many of these amino acids can stimulate certain neurotransmitters um, and even stimulate the production of certain hormones. In addition, protein is essential to synthesize specific enzymes in the body. So it can act as biocatalysts for nearly all chemical processes in the body. And also protein can also act as the last sort of energy reserve and can actually help to synthesize glucose through the process known as gluconeogenesis. In addition, protein helps to transport molecules around the body. So protein is essential to create hemoglobin, which is needed for the transport of oxygen, transferrin as well, which is the transport carrier for iron as well. In addition, we can see that protein is essential for immune responses to actually mount an immune response. Protein also regulates fluid and acid-base balance in the body. And then obviously, the most critical one for athletes and high performers is the growth and building blocks for muscle tissue and to stimulate muscle protein synthesis. So let's take a look at protein myth number one. That is that excess protein is dangerous for everyone. Now, if we take a look at a study published in the International Journal of Sport Nutrition and Exercise Metabolism, they found that athletes eating up to 1.3 grams per pound per day of protein experienced no kidney issues as a result. So that study essentially concluded that it appears that protein intake under 2.8 grams per kilogram, which is 1.3 grams per pound, does not impair kidney function in well-trained athletes as indicated by the measures of renal function used in the study. So let's just take a moment to think about that. 2.8 grams per kilogram of protein. Now that by itself is quite difficult to achieve unless you're having maybe, you know, six large meals per day or you're supplementing with protein powder up to twice a day. So realistically, that is very unlikely for the everyday person. In addition, a 2005 study concluded that although excessive protein intake remains a health concern in individuals with pre-existing kidney disease, the literature lacks significant research demonstrating a link between protein intake and the initiation or progression of kidney disease in healthy individuals. More importantly, evidence suggests that protein-induced changes in kidney function are likely a normal adaptive mechanism well within the functional limits of a healthy kidney. So here we can see that super high protein diets are not gonna be beneficial for those with pre-existing kidney disease. However, those with normal to healthy functioning kidneys can probably tolerate a very high protein diet for many, many years without any major issues. Protein myth number two, plant protein is equally as good as animal protein. So hopefully none of my listeners or viewers have watched the movie uh, Game Changers. In my opinion, that's one of the most corrupt movies ever. Drop a comment down below if you've seen Game Changers or what your thoughts are. 
Um, so the biggest myth here is that plant protein is equally as good as animal protein, specifically for building muscle and burning fat. So this study was titled Animal Protein versus Plant Protein in Supporting Lean Mass and Muscle Strength, a Systematic Review and Meta-Analysis of Randomized Controlled Trials. Now the results from the meta-analysis demonstrated that protein source did not affect changes in absolute lean mass or muscle strength However, there was a favoring effect of animal protein on percentage of lean muscle mass. So we can see that animal protein tends to be more beneficial to create and synthesize lean muscle mass over plant protein, especially in younger adults. However, if you are concerned about life extension or longevity, it is quite clear that excessive stimulation of the mTOR pathway, which is predominantly a less or mediated through animal protein because animal protein is rich in leucine whereas plant protein is generally lower in leucine we're getting less mTOR stimulation so we're not going to be I guess aging as quickly as compared to a plant protein based diet again this is very debatable but based off what we know about mTOR stimulation it does seem to accelerate aging protein myth number three you can only absorb 30 grams of protein in one meal so this is one of the most debated topics around protein. We can see that a study that was done in women, the study was titled Protein Pulse Feeding Improves protein retention in elderly women and that consumption of more than 54 grams of protein in a single meal versus across four meals resulted in no differences in muscle growth as these women had on average 90 pounds of lean mass it is however plausible that more protein could be efficiently processed the same researchers found that a single high protein meal was actually more effective in a population of elderly women in stimulating muscle growth. So in my opinion and my stance around protein rich meals, I personally aim for about 40 to 50 grams of protein per meal. And that's usually balanced by carbohydrates, you know, a bit of fiber and some fats, which is essentially gonna help to slow the release of the protein and keep that muscle proteins synthesis stimulated and so research done on intermittent fasting supports the theory that your body can cope with far more protein than most people think and with two studies showing that the consumption of an, of an average of 80 to 100 grams of protein in a four hour period yielded no differences in lean mass which is pretty phenomenal protein myth number four bcaa's are better than eaa's now Let's take a look at the differences between BCAAs and EAAs, essential amino acids. So BCAA standing for branch chain amino acids. This is leucine, isoleucine, and valine. And then the essential amino acids, histidine, isoleucine, leucine, lysine, methionine, phenylalanine, threonine, tryptophan and valine. So, so what we can see here is that one of the biggest myths surrounding BCAA supplements is that they're more effective at stimulating muscle protein synthesis or muscle growth as compared to EAAs. Now, realistically, we want all of the amino acids present to help stimulate muscle growth because there are multiple uh, actions that these different amino acids have on nitrogen balance and protein synthesis. So realistically, we want to be aiming to get most of our protein from essential amino acids. So in my stance here, I would opt for essential amino acids over BCAAs. But that brings me to my next point, protein myth number five, that protein powder is superior to real food. Now, this is not the case. Protein powder is simply a supplement to add, or I guess to in addition to a healthy diet, to help bridge the gap to actually meet someone's protein requirements. So the benefit of whole foods versus powder. So whole foods have a higher thermic effect of feeding on the body. So it's actually gonna warm up the body and actually burn more calories than just protein powder alone. And the other benefit of whole foods as a like animal protein, as a protein source, is that we're getting more rich and diverse nutrient profile, whereas we cannot get that in a simple whey protein. There's no zinc usually, there's no other vitamins and minerals found within the whey protein. So 
The other benefit though of protein powder is that it's easily absorbed and rapidly digested and can also potently stimulate insulin release. And insulin is an anti-catabolic hormone, so it can actually help to prevent muscle breakdown. So hopefully you learned something new in today's video. If you did, please like the video and drop a comment down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts on um, protein myths, some other things I may have missed. And if you're brand new to my channel, please don't forget to check out all of my other amazing videos. I, I spend a lot of time, 12 to 13 hour days um, creating content. So hopefully you learned something new. I look forward to seeing you in the next episode.